Hello, gentle people, and welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time visiting my site, I'm Hazel, a retired teacher educator and self-taught resin artist, and I share um, how I create the items that I sell in my Etsy shop and my Shopify store. I hope that my new as well as returning subscribers and viewers pick up a useful tip or two that will enhance your creativity. I'm adding some new items to my shop for Father's Day and so in today's tutorial I will be combining basically three product concepts. The top selling item in my Etsy shop is my personalized dominoes. Uh, they come with um, country flags, they come with people's names, they come with organizations. Uh, it's my top seller. I also sell quite a bit of purple and gold items. Uh, these are usually purchased as gifts for members of the African American fraternity Omega Psi Phi. Um, but and if you look at my business cards or you look at the colors on my website um, my colors are purple and yellow not really gold but purple and yellow so it's a color combo that I like and the product line that I am most proud of is my Afro Lady collection and one of the top sellers in that collection is the wall clock so today I'm actually combining those three concepts, creating a purple and gold wall clock with a domino theme. Um, this wall clock will be the perfect gift uh, for any office wall, any man cave, den, uh, wherever a dominologist hangs out. Alrighty, we are ready to rock and roll. So the first thing we need for our clock is a big round wooden board. This is, um, I wouldn't ordinarily have a board that has like all these different pieces on it. Um, this 18 inch board I normally buy and it's like $15 in Michaels. You can get it for like uh, $12 on Amazon. Uh, but this particular one, because it has these multi-colors, was marked down to $8.99. So I said, let me just go ahead and grab it and I'll do my clock um, and save some money using this board. So this is our 18 inch round. This particular board um, comes with a hanger. But again, we're gonna put the clock mechanism back here. So we've got our, we've got our board. And then the first thing we will need to do is tape the back of that board. So we need some painter's tape. And then if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I use gesso a lot to prime my um, charcuterie boards. But because this is different types of wood and different texture, I'm actually going to take this out back and I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum uh, 2X primer to seal this. And then once it's sealed, once it's sealed, then we'll be ready to work with our resin. And of course, I have the Craftsmart Part A resin. Craftsmart Part B hardener. We need a measuring cup. I think, a, I don't know, maybe a hundred. You know, as I'm looking at that, let me switch that out. Let me do a little bit more. Let me switch that out. Uh, we'll use a larger measuring bowl. And we need our nitro gloves. We're going to need one large cup for the purple and 
I'm putting three small cups for the gold. And we need our stir sticks. And then we need our domino mold. Um, when I get ready to pour this, I'll show you the difference between this mold and the one that I use for the dominoes that I sell online. We're going to be using eye candy. So we're doing a Barney purple. And then I have three of the eye candy golds. We have an Aura gold, a Kin, K-I-N, a Kin gold, and a 14 karat nugget gold. Once the dominoes are ready to be attached to the board, we will be using our Gorilla Clear Grip. This is the same as E6000, basically. This is basically the same as E6000. And um, that's it. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is tape the back of this round. Now, if I were buying a regular round, it would not have these pieces of wood on it. This wood is to keep these four pieces attached. Um, so it's going to make taping this just a little more challenging, but uh, not at all impossible. So I'm just going to tape that out the way to get us started. And then we're just going to go around <clears throat> these edges with our painter's tape. I don't know if that's in the camera view or not. Let's put this here. And once the tape is on, then just go with your fingers and create that edge. Oops. And then we're going to take a razor blade and just trim this. It helps if you have a sharp razor. Let me go get another razor blade. <laughs> All right, and then just run your fingers around those edges to make sure they're tight. And then we're going to take this out back and we're going to spray it with the primer. All right, field trip to the patio. All right, so I am outside and I have my uh, Rust-Oleum uh, primer. Uh, notice that this says flat white. Uh, you want flat, you don't want gloss. The resin does not adhere to a glossy surface very well. If you spray gloss, then you're gonna have to go back and uh, sand it a little bit. So, first thing I do, and I don't have gloves on, is spray the sides. And then we want to spray the whole thing. Thank you. 
we will let this dry and while this is drying we'll go inside and pour our gold dominoes okay so we have primed the back of the clock um, the clock wall and so now uh, what I'm going to do is pour the dominoes that are going to make the numbers now two things one I'm using this domino mold. This was the very first one that I ever purchased, and it's really, I don't wanna say inexpensive, but um, I don't sell these. Uh, let me just show you, I hope the camera, this is the domino that you get from this mold. This is the domino that I sell, and you can just see the difference. I don't know, am I holding that? Let me move. this way so that you can see the difference in the thickness of these dominoes so this is the one that I sell this one is the first one that I bought but they're really these are really thin but for the purpose of making a clock they are perfect you don't really want these big heavy ones on your wood this is perfect for making the clock and again just so you can see the difference and just the thickness of the molds. Look at the size, difference in the size of those two molds and how deep this is versus, let me turn it the, that way. And then you can see how thin these are compared to how thick this one is. So this is the mold that I use for the dominoes that I sell, but this turns out to be perfect for what we're doing today. So, okay, so we need to mix our resin, and I calculate that I need about 80 milliliters. I always mark my cup, so I have 40 and 80 there. And again, if you know what you're doing, fast forward through this. Uh, 40 milliliters of the Part B hardener. Forty milliliters of the Part A resin. I always say follow the manufacturer's instructions, and Craftsmark tells us to do a mixing ratio of one to one, which is what we did, forty and forty, and then mix for a minimum of five minutes, which is what I'm getting ready to do. Okay, I am going to be adding the Aura Gold to this. Now, let me just point out something. Um, particularly where I see things online, I have seen domino clocks that just had random dominoes on them and that's fine if that's what you like however i have taken the time to actually mark you see the black dots on here i have taken the time to mark the actual numbers so this is one there are two pips three there are four five six and then we have to come over here to get to seven. Six and one is seven. We come over here, six and two is eight. Six and three is nine. Uh, six and four is 10. Six and five, 11. And then our six and six is 12. So we are only pouring four, uh, <clears throat> we are only pouring 12 dominoes. We're not doing this whole tray. We're just doing the 12 that we need to go on our clock. And again, 
again, I've marked them with dots. And if you're worrying about the black dots showing when I take, when I unmold these, uh, the pips on these or the dots are going to be uh, colored in purple varnish. And so the purple will easily cover the black dots. So not to worry that the black dots are going to show up. And again, the background of the clock will be purple and the dominoes are going to be gold. I, um, there is a, a African-American fraternity whose colors are purple and gold. And I have sold quite a few items in that color palette, purple and gold. And if you look at my business card, my colors on my card are purple and yellow. Well, I guess you could say purple and gold, but purple and yellow. But yeah, okay, so we measured correctly. 80 milliliters is what I poured, and that's what I'm using. Good job. Good job. Okay, and so now we need our heat gun to pop the air bubbles. My clear cover is on another project, so we're just going to cover this with a box today. And we'll let this cure and um, I'll come back in a little while, move this off the table, and we will put the round board on here and pour the resin for that. Okay, I am back and um, let's, we're taking the cover off of this. I don't know if these are well, they're just my fingerprints on it, so they're not cured yet, but we need to take these off the table so that we can work on the board. So before, um, oops, so before I um, mix and pour the resin to go on here, I need to drill the hole in the middle because this did not come with a hole. We've got to put a hole on it. Um, I'm not... Well, I am. I'm very good at measuring. I'm getting ready to tell a lie. Uh, but I discovered it was easier for me to find the middle of this. And I'm going to do it on camera. Oops. For me to just take... I um, have this brown paper. Okay, I have this brown paper that I use in packaging. So instead of me doing a lot of measuring to find the center to this, I just cut a piece of brown paper. I'm just tracing the circle on here. Let's move the board. Let's cut the circle. Now again, if you want to measure, by all means measure. Uh, I just find this to be easier for me. And you figure out uh, methods and techniques that work for you to ease. the circle out, all I do is just fold this in half and then fold it in quarters and then that's going to be my center. Just like that. That's my center. 
and then I take my board and like I said if you want to do a lot of measuring you know it's 18 inches across and whatever whatever do your thing but for me I'm just make sure that's even there and that's going to be my center and I guess I could verify I could verify that let me see okay so this is an 18 inch board so if I did that correctly that dot should be right at 9 let me see this is 18 yep that dot is right at 9 so it is centered okay so now we need to um, get our resin poured for this and I am going to do I'm going to do 200 um, I'm going to do 200 just to make sure that I have plenty I don't want it to be thin in any spots so I have marked um, my cup 100 and 200 and so part B resin oh excuse me part B hardener 100 milliliters And the Part A resin, 100 milliliters. And we are going to mix this for <clears throat> five minutes. So again, fast forward so you don't get bored. mixed now we need to mix our colors the background is going to be purple so we want most of this to be purple and then even though the uh, dominoes are gold if this is on the wall um, I don't want it to just be purple background gold dominoes I'm going to pour some gold across the bottom here to create a little um, I'm going to call it artsy interest. I don't know if that's the right term, but that's why I had the three golds. I want gold across the bottom to just make it look, look more like art. So we did the, we did the, um, Ooh, what am I trying to say? We did the dominoes and the aura gold, so we're going to use a little bit more of that. And again, this is just to add a little interest to the background and not have it be just solid purple. So there's our aura gold, that's one of the darker golds. Then we have the Kin, the Kin Gold. It's um, uh, a deeper, more mustard gold is what I'll call it. So that's our Kin Gold. And we'll do the last one with the 14 Karat Nugget Gold. And there's actually some spilt in this envelope, so let me see if I can get that out of there. So 
So that's the 14 karat. All right, so those are our goals that are mixed. And so now we need to mix our Barney Purple. So here's our Barney Purple. We put a nice amount. I think I want that a little darker. That look that has more of a lavender look to it. So let's add a little bit more, darken it some. All right, so our purple is poured. And before we pour our resin, we need to drill that hole. I'm going to remove this background that I usually use so that we are working directly on the silicon mat. And so we need to put our board, elevate our board, so that the resin, when it runs off the edges, it hits the silicon mat. We're going to put our board here. If I'm doing a charcuterie board, like all of you who have watched my videos know this table is not level. But let's, because this is so big. Let's see if we can get this level. We don't want the resin running off one side. Okay, that looks pretty good that way. And ah, that looks darn good that way. Alrighty. So now we are ready to pour. So as I said in my mind, I don't want the whole I want everything purple, but I want some gold in here. So we're gonna start with our purple. a nice purple. That'll work. I'm glad I darkened it some. Okay, and then I'm going to take my Funny, you can see the wood grain through that. That this is not as dark as I thought it was. I might have to mix some more to get a darker, darker. Okay, so we have our our goals. Here. 
And actually, as I'm looking at this, I should have poured the gold that direction so it went with the grain of the wood. But that's okay. All right, so we have some more purple. So let's get some more purple on here. Oh yeah, that's much darker. This is the fun part of doing this, is if you have to change up, you can change up. When you warm up the resin, it expands. We'll worry about the sides after we get the face done. So now I'm going to take the heat gun and pop some air bubbles. Okay, so let's, let's see the image. So now I am going to use the heat gun to blend some of this gold and purple. I'm going to move this around. So now, um, I can go and I can pick up what's on the board and start adding it to the sides. You don't want to add it to the sides right away because all it's going to do is drip off. You need this to thicken some, but I'm just going to pick up some of this. That's funny how that's draining into that uh, opening right there. Okay, so I'm going to go away and come back in about 10 minutes and then we'll work on this, the edges here. 
um, but let this kind of set for a little bit. Again, I've already said that I probably should have poured the gold going that direction the way these wood panels are put together um, but I don't like I love the gold I don't like the purple so I just mix some more purple and we're just gonna add some more purple to this I want to get rid of some of these lines here I don't like these lines and this is too too light down here so let's see what we can do. Yeah, it's too light. I don't like that I can see the seams, I guess is the, the better word. I don't like that you can see these seams where these boards come together. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to hide the seams is what I'm trying to do now. I do not like that you can see those seams. All right. It was beautiful initially. I just don't like these purple, I don't like these seams showing on here. I'm trying to get rid of these seams. And maybe, just maybe, the dominoes will lay on the seams. Okay, so now I'm going to take um, whatever gold is left over. Ooh. So now I'm gonna take the little bit of gold that I have left over in this cup and drizzle this on here. something like as simple as that can really bug the daylights out of you all right so now we need to work on the sides this should be tacky enough now that we can go around and do our edges
this is when a lazy Susan would be wonderful. Then I could just turn this. And I actually have one, but I don't want to disrupt this. I'm scooping up any resin that dripped, that ran over the edge. I'm scooping it up and applying it to the edge. And again, you want to do this last because the resin, since it's on a vertical, it will drip off until it begins to set and then it'll stick and stay. Actually, you know, I'm going to try and turn this. Let's see. So I can do these edges on this side. Okay, so these are cured, a little bit, a little bendy, but that's okay. We're going to take these out of here. And again, you see that black dot that I was talking about. If these were dominoes that were going to be handled, you know, while you're playing the game, I would do them in varnish. But because these are going up on the clock and nobody will ever touch them, I am going to finish these with um, glitter paint pen. And I do have a purple. going to do
So okay, why don't I do them? Why don't I do them in order? Uh, where's number one? Let's do them in order. So let's do number one. All right, so our pips and our lines are painted. So the board itself, we've poured the resin on that. It was curing. And then tomorrow, uh, first thing, we will attach these to that board and then uh, attach the clock mechanism. But there you go, they are done. It is the next morning. This is all nice and dried. Let me turn it that way. Um, and so the first thing we need to do is get the tape off the back. That means we need our heat gun and we're just going to warm, run the heat gun along these edges and that will help this tape peel up. So let's So if I were um, getting ready to sell this, I would then spray paint this backside. So again, you do not see all these seams and whatnot. Um, and then let's go ahead and just take our little sander and let's go along the edge right here and even that out. So now we want to attach the clock mechanism. Let me see. Actually, no, let's do let's do the dominoes first. So you remember that I had made had found the center hole by just cutting a circle 
folding it in half and then folding it again and then clipping off the corner. So in order to figure out where to mark, place the dominoes, we're gonna take the same circle and we're going to fold it into, take that same quarter and fold it into thirds. One, two, three. And then I generally just cut, I just cut on that fold so I know where I just cut those so I know where they are. And then we open this and we have our center. And that's just to hold it in place. And then I take a Sharpie marker and I just raise this up and I just mark a line under each of these cuts so that I know where the dominoes are supposed to go. Just lift that up and draw a line on that cut. Draw a line on that cut. This should be right on this seam right here. Draw a line on that cut. Line on that cut, a line on that cut, a line on that cut, and a line on that cut. So again, my little piece of brown paper uh, serves more than just the purpose of measuring. I hold on to this. So we did our dominant, we painted our pips yesterday. And so now we get to glue them ooh, in place. We painted our pips yesterday. All right, so this is when the fun begins. Let's see. I want the gold at the bottom. So let's spin this around. I want the gold at the bottom. So we get to place these and again as I said I painted these um, according yes that's what I'm talking about and so you can measure the distance in that you want um, I can pretty much eyeball this and know that these are about where I want them to be. This is a large clock um, and they didn't have, um, they did not have a set that had longer hands, uh, but we're going to put this on here anyway, but you want to make sure that your hands do not touch your dominoes is the point I'm trying to make. That whatever set, whatever clock kit clock me whatever clock mechanism kit you buy make sure that when you put the hands on they do not touch the dominoes okay so here we go we are just going to take our little gorilla glue here and we're going to glue these in place And again, you could certainly 
just place any domino on here but to me it makes more sense that your dominoes match the numbers so again you saw when I poured I did not pour that whole tray of dominoes I only poured the 12 that I needed I just think it makes more sense So they are there. I'm going to let this sit for about an hour before I come in and attach, before I come in and attach the clock mechanism. And again, you can, if these are not straight like you want them, you can still reposition them. I want that on a better angle. I want that moved over some my nail polish remover and we're just going to get rid of these marks that we put on here okay so our numerals are on here let me turn it the other way so it faces the camera okay so 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and I actually see right there on that pip where I didn't complete the circle. Let me go get my marker um, and fill in that circle. Let me see that I did not do this. Okay, so we're going to give this an hour for this to, for these to set before I add the clock mechanism. But uh, yeah, this is what this is what we're working with. The clock mechanism that um, was in the materials was this one uh, with black handles, but I went into my stash and found a clock kit that has gold handles. So we're gonna use this one. Uh, three quarters inch, yep, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so all of these go on basically the same way. So we are going to take these, move these to the side. I'm going to take off. important okay so then what we do is we turn this over and we oh my hole needs to be a little bit bigger So let's do this again. There we go. Okay, so let me just let you see that, oh, oh I got another piece on here. I gotta get this, there's a washer on there that I need to get off. So, 
on the back you should have <clears throat> your box and then you have this rubber washer. These go on the back. So let's stick that in there like that. Now put the brass washer back. The one we just took off, we're now putting back on. Once that's on, then that holds oh, that box in place. And just be aware, which way is 12? 12, 12 is that way. Just be aware that when you do this, try and make sure this is straight, aligned with your 12 o'clock. Okay, so now that that's, that's on, then we put on the is different from my other one. Now we put this little doohickey on there. Again, with this pin, should fit right. Right on there. All right, and then this requires uh, one double A battery. Oh. Okay. And this is the moment of truth. We need one double A battery. Let's plop her. did it correctly that should start moving look at there we are in business we did it well, let me turn it so it's facing the right way now I did a three quarter inch shaft that shaft could have been shorter um, and again You'd want to buy a set with handles that are about ooh, you'd want a set that has uh, hands that are at least four inches long so that the length of the hands is appropriate to the size of the clock. But uh, it's working. So there we are. But woo, woo, we did good.